Now I want to take you all back to 2011 and a little referendum that happened in the UK that's kind of been lost in history and forgotten about. Back in 2010 when Nick Clegg's Lib Dems went into coalition with David Cameron's Conservative Party, one of the caveats for going into coalition was that they had a referendum on changing the voting system in the UK. Now Nick Clegg wanted a referendum on a proportional representation voting system but unfortunately the Tories got their way and it was based on an alternative voting system and this referendum lost badly and I think partly the reason that it lost so badly is an alternative voting system is a much more complicated system to understand it still works around the framework of first past the post but each constituency the winner has to get more than 50% of the vote share if they don't get 50% of the vote share people's second choice candidate is taken into consideration until eventually you get a candidate that gets over 50% of the vote now I think generally the British public were happier and more comfortable with what they understood. They understand first past the post. Alternative voting system was a little bit tricky to get your head round and I think that's partly why it lost so badly. Now imagine a world where Nick Clegg had a bit more backbone and he was able to really push for a proportional representation system. I don't understand why you can't do that really. If I was Nick Clegg I'd be saying it's proportional representation or nothing we don't go into coalition with you he held the power in that situation so really he should have been able to push for a proportional representation voting system referendum now if this referendum was on proportional representation i think there's a high chance it could have won pr voting system is very easy to understand if you vote for the green party they get four percent of the vote share in the country they will get four percent of MPs in Parliament. If you vote for UKIP, they get 14% of the vote share. They will get 14% of MPs in Parliament. Every single vote in the country matters. And it's also very clear to portray that first past the post is very undemocratic. If you look at the 2015 election results, you will see that the Lib Dems got 2 million votes and 6 MPs. UKIP got 3.5 million votes and got 1 MP. The Green Party got a million votes and got one MP. It's very clear to display that first past the post is not democratic and very unfair and it's very clear to portray that PR voting system is very fair and very democratic. It's a clear and concise message to portray to the British people. Now what's interesting and what I want to talk to you about today in this video is what would have happened if PR won a referendum in 2011 and the 2015 general election was run under a proportional representation voting system. Now the beauty of a PR voting system is that every single party can now have a clear and concise message of what their party is about. We no longer have the Tories and Labour that have to appeal to a broad, wide audience. There will be more political parties and each political party can have a clear and concise message about what they're about. Now obviously the hot topic in 2015 was Brexit. And the key to the results of the 2015 election, if it was done under PR, would be whether the Conservatives went for a pro-EU manifesto or still added their referendum in the manifesto. I believe the Brexit referendum was inevitable. I think if the 2015 election was done under PR, I think Labour would have lost out to the Greens quite considerably. But I think the Tories would still have been scared of losing a lot of votes to UKIP if they did not put that referendum in their manifesto. If the Tories had gone pro-EU, they would have lost more votes to UKIP. Now a lot of Brexit voting Tories still voted for the Tories because they promised that referendum. I think it would have been inevitable that we would have ended up with a Conservative UKIP coalition in 2015. Now you could argue that the Conservatives if they went pro-EU could have formed another coalition with the Lib Dems but I just think that pro-Brexit support in 2015 was too strong for them to ignore. We just had five years of Tory austerity, people were poor, people were angry, they wanted someone to blame and Nigel Farage was very good at getting them to blame the EU. So what does that mean for Brexit? I think 
we obviously still would have got the Brexit referendum. I think the Brexit referendum still would have won. I think David Cameron would have still stepped down and Theresa May came in. And I think we'd still have the same infighting in Parliament about what sort of Brexit deal we'd have. It's just each MP would be wearing a different colour rosette. There'd be more purple UKIP ones in Parliament. But you'd still have UKIP pushing for a hard Brexit, a mixture in the Conservative Party, the Labour Party half wanting a second referendum, the Greens wanting a second referendum, it still would have been incredibly difficult to come to terms with a deal that would have properly represented the vote share. Now, I didn't vote for Brexit myself. I don't want Brexit. But I do understand that the fairest result would have been a fair compromise to represent the result of the Brexit referendum, which was incredibly close, 52% to 48%. There should have been a decent compromise, a soft Brexit, where we stay in the customs union. That would have been the fairest result for everyone. But I think even under a PR system, we would have had exactly the same infighting in trying to get a Brexit deal. So let's assume things played out relatively the same way they did in our timeline. Theresa May tries for another election to get a stronger majority. Now, this is where it gets really interesting, the 2017 election. I don't think Theresa May would have won under a PR voting system. The 2017 election is one of the clearest examples of how unfair first-past-the-post is. If you look at the vote share between the Tories and Labour, Labour 40% of the vote, the Tories 42% of the vote, and then look at the number of seats difference. I think this would have played out very differently under PR. I don't think Theresa May would have won. The key differences being what the Lib Dems, the Greens and UKIP would have done. I don't think the Greens would have stolen many votes off of Labour. I think they were very similar in policy at the time. Labour under Jeremy Corbyn have much more socialist policies which were much more closer to the Green Party. So I don't think the Green Party would have affected that Labour result too much under PR. The key difference here being what happened to UKIP. Now, after Brexit, UKIP kind of went off into insignificance. That's why you saw people like this bloke turn up in UKIP. The sort of professionalism UKIP espoused to at the time was getting someone to make rape jokes about Labour MPs. Now, I strongly believe that under a PR voting system, UKIP wouldn't have scaled off into insignificance. Nigel Farage would have stayed as leader and they would have been a relative force in the political sphere. Look at reform right now, polling at about 10% of the country want this anti-immigration, patriotic British politics and they would have voted for it. Now, that is not reflected in this vote. I think in 2017, under PR, UKIP would have been a much larger force to be reckoned with, and they would have taken a lot of Tory votes. Now, this is where the parties stood at the time on Brexit. Tories wanting out of the ECJ, quitting the single market, striking other trade deals with other countries, which means exiting the customs union. Labour leaving the option of the customs union on the table. But the key here being the Lib Dems that wanted to stop Brexit altogether. So I believe the election would have gone like this. I think the Tories would have lost a lot of that 13 million to UKIP. I think Labour's vote share would have relatively stayed the same. I don't think they would have lost a lot of votes to the Greens. But the Lib Dems would have got a lot more votes if they'd gone on purely getting rid of Brexit and not exiting the EU. So I think we would have ended up with a Labour-Lib Dem coalition which would have inevitably led to a second referendum. I think that would have been the only, only policy that the Lib Dems would have wanted to put forward if they were in coalition with Labour as a second referendum. And I think that second referendum would have won. By this point, we know by all the polls that were around at the time that the mood had changed on Brexit. And people were starting to understand a lot more clearer what the realities of Brexit actually meant for the UK economy, for business. And I think that second referendum would have swung in favour of staying in the EU. And I think Britain would have stayed in the EU. What do you think to that? A Jeremy Corbyn Prime Minister? A second referendum on the EU? Britain never leaving the EU? No Boris Johnson. <laughs> no Liz Trust. <laughs> Imagine the difference in the country if that had played out. Imagine how we would have dealt with COVID if we'd had uh, three years of uh, Jeremy Corbyn government investing in public services, investing in the NHS, how we would have been able to cope with COVID much better. Uh, we would have still been in the EU. Imagine the effects on the economy, that extra 4% of GDP, imports and exports of pharmaceuticals. Now, obviously, this is just a bit of fun. Looking at all the different facts and figures, uh, this is my assumption of how it would have played out but it could have gone vastly different i mean there's so many different avenues it could have gone you could have had a pro 
EU Conservative Party back in 2015 and then UKIP would have risen up more maybe there's so many different theories and that's what I'm looking forward to in the comments please drop your theories down below how do you think it would have gone if we'd had a PR voting system in the UK since 2015 if you enjoyed the video click a like if you haven't subscribed subscribe up top and there'll be another video you can check that out as well till next time take care